I've got access to Dolly 3 inside ChatGPT for a couple days now, and in this video I'm going to walk you through some amazing things you can generate with Dolly 3. I will also show you some limitations that I had come across so far, and few tips and tricks to bypass some of these limitations to get the best possible outcome for your image generation. With that being said, let's get into it. Oh, by the way, I created this video's thumbnail with Dolly, so let me know what you think of it in the comments. Now, when you get access to Dolly 3 inside ChatGPT, it automatically added to the list of options under the GPT-4 button, as you can see here. And to generate an image, you simply select Dolly 3 and then type or paste your prompt in the chat box like this. As you can see here, the prompt that I entered is being written by ChatGPT into four different versions, and then it starts generating it. What basically happening is that you give your prompt to ChatGPT, then the chatbot rewrite it in natural language with four versions, then pass it along to the Dolly AI to generate the images. This is great when you're open to exploring different versions of the image you had in mind. And Dolly 3 works really well with natural language prompting. So most often than not, you will get great images with minimal prompting. It's a great feature for those that don't really have much experience with crafting AI prompts. It's very beginners friendly. But if you know how to craft image prompts and you want Dolly to generate an image using your exact prompt, then just typing or pasting your prompt in the chat box won't really work because every time you enter a prompt as it is, ChatGPT will always rewrite it before passing it to Dolly 3. And that can make a world of differences in your images. So here's a simple way I found to make Dolly 3 use my exact prompt to generate an image. I simply take this piece of text. Please use this exact description for Dolly 3 without any changes and add this text to the beginning of the prompt I want generated and this tells ChatGPT to pass along my prompt exactly as it is to Dolly. Here's our two images generated by Dolly 3 with the same prompt from me but one is modified by ChatGPT before it passed it along while the other was passed along to Dolly exactly as it is. As you can see there's a big difference. Now one question you might be asking if you haven't get access to ChatGPT Dolly 3 is does it live up to the hype? And is it comparable to the likes of Midjourney? I would say yes. And there are some cases that it's even better than current Midjourney. Most notably is its ability to generate text. I would say it will get the text you want to generate in an image correctly 8 out of 10 times in the first generation. Most often in very high quality even when compared to Dolly 3 inside Bing Image Creator as well. And when it comes to image quality, it is very much on par with Midjourney. Let me show you some comparing examples in different use cases that I use these AIs for. Now in this first example I have Dolly 3 and Midjourney create two t-shirt design graphics that I could use for my print-on-demand business that I do on the side. The idea is to create a t-shirt graphic of an Highlander cow for Halloween. You know, this little cute guy. An Highlander cow holding an Halloween pumpkin in a vintage illustration style. As you can see, both Dolly and Midjourney created two great designs. But you'll notice that Midjourney tend to add more stylization to its generated images, while Dolly stay close to what's described in my prompt. It is as creative as I prompt it to be. Another difference I notice is the quality of graphics. When I zoomed in on the one created by Midjourney, you'll see that the smaller details always look like they are smudged, which will become more noticeable when I upscale it or print it. Now compared to the one created by Dolly, the smaller details are much cleaner and crisp. I'm planning to make another video going into much detailed on creating print on demand and digital product graphics with Dolly. So if that's something you're interested in, subscribe to the channel to catch that video when it comes out. In this next example, I generated two realistic image portraits with Midjourney and Dolly 3. Looking at these, I would say that the image generated by Midjourney is better, but keep in mind that Dolly will create better results with better prompts. Even the prompts created by ChatGPT won't be as good if you don't properly tell it what you want to see in the result generation. Another thing I want to mention with Dolly 3 is aspect ratio. Right now you can generate images in three different Starbucks sounding aspect ratios which are tall, wide and square. Simply add wide or square aspect ratio at the end of your prompt to generate in that ratio. If you didn't specify the aspect ratio, it will be determined based on the context of the images you're generating. Hopefully OpenAI add more options soon. 
Okay, the one thing that I think that Dolly 3 in ChatGPT really need to improve on is the way it handles copyright subjects that can be included in prompts. This is more of an issue on the ChatGPT side than Dolly 3 itself, for example. If you give it a simple prompt to generate, something like a YouTube thumbnail of a guy with his thumbs up, smiling, in style of Unreal Engine render. Just by having the word YouTube or Unreal Engine in there will trigger ChatGPT to stop the generation due to its content policy. Which is a bit extreme if you ask me. It's a bit more understandable if it stop your generation if you're prompted to generate an image of a known celebrity or a logo of big brands, but just referring to any copyright subject is enough to stop. The generation is overkill. Dolly 3 is able to generate copyrighted subjects if you able to pass it a prompt that describes said subject without using any known copyright words or names. Hopefully OpenAI improve on this in the next updates. For now, to get around this, I usually try to describe what I want to generate as descriptive as possible, without using any copyright words or phrases. Then I add the direct prompt extension I created to have ChatGPT pass my prompt to Dolly as it is without any changes to it. That's how I was able to create images like these without ChatGPT blocking my prompts. That's about the summarize of what I think you should keep in mind whenever you get access to Dolly in ChatGPT and what you can expect. Right now I'm mainly using Dolly 3 to generate graphics to use in my online side hustle business. And I honestly prefer it over Midjourney, which what I mainly used before. I will be making another video going over this in more details. That's all for this video. And always remember that the better the prompt you give Dolly 3, the better the result it will generate for you. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next video.